Hi, this is Rachel here from Offroad CC, and today I'm going to be talking about riding the 2018 Live Hail 2, a women's specific bike from Liv, which is a sister brand of Giant Bikes. The Live Hail is one of a rare breed of women's specific bikes. We've got the aluminium and therefore cheaper version of the Hail in here. It's priced at £2,800 and shares the same 160mm Maestro suspension platform as the Giant Rain, so that's with the one piece rocker link and a trinium mounted shock. The price is reasonably similar to the price of the Giant Rain 2 as well, and so therefore this spec list is pretty much identical, save for the regular changes of changing out the grips and saddle for women's preferences. The Hale, however, does swap out the Giant own brand dropper post for a shorter version, um, and despite its identical seat tube lengths, us women still get a shorter dropper post. We also get a 11 to 46 tooth cassette and 170mm SLX cranks, instead of the 1142 tooth cassette and the 175mm Praxis cranks on the rain. Elsewhere, the spec is pretty much what you'd expect for a bike of this price. There's RockShox 160mm Yaris up front and a RockShox Deluxe RT shock taking care of the suspension at the rear. There is, as mentioned, an SLX one by drivetrain with a small 30 tooth chainring and Shimano Dior brakes, which are, at the moment, actually the better option from the Shimano stable. They don't feature that wandering bike point that we found are present on SLX brakes and above. It's pleasing to see a bike at this price point being sold with ready to ride tyres. It's got a quite honestly brilliant 2.5 Maxxis Shorty Wide Trail XO 3C Max Terra on the front and a 2.4 High Roller 2 XO on the rear. The rest of the kit is Giant's own brand stuff with 25mm internal wide rims, Giant hubs, bars, grips, that dropper and finally a tubative descendant stem. So Liv's clear to stress that the hail's not an altered rain, but it's hard not to make comparisons. Both the hail and the rain's advertising talk about fast ascending and being enduro capable. The bikes certainly sound like they have the same purpose in mind, but they sport quite different geometry to achieve that same goal. Liv say they use a database of thousands of female measurements to separate the differences between men's and women's bodies based on averages. And then they design a rut bike around this platform. It sounds good, right? Well, in theory, yes, but Liv seem to have missed the mark where specific geometry for women steps away from being good geometry and, I think, a bit inferior in some places to the rain. I'll explain myself and I'll start with a positive. So the hail comes in one size smaller than the rain, which is great. So it means that smaller riders can now fit aboard this brand. There is a negative here though, because um, the hail only comes in sizes extra small, small and medium. And considering I'm five foot four and rode a medium, it leaves riders any taller than me, probably needing to step over to the rain and a large bike instead. So next, the head angle of the hail is pretty steep for an all mountain bike at 66 degrees. I have come to realise in my time riding bikes that you don't necessarily need a super slap head angle for a good ride, as long as the reach figure is roomy, which at 439mm on the size medium, it's not really. On a bike that sets out to be conquering steep mountain descents, I'd expect the head angle to play in the 65 degree ballpark for a few more of those get out of jail free cards. Liv say they introduced the bike back in 2015 and it hasn't been updated since. And since then, trends have lent towards longer and slacker bikes, which is something they'll be looking to into the future. Liv also say that the head angle was steepened for technical climbing. But in my opinion, longer chainstays, a longer wheelbase, and a steeper effective seat tube angle will provide a more efficient climber, no matter what the head angle of the bike is. So finally on geometry, Liv finished the whole thing off by giving the hail a bottom bracket drop of just five mil. So I've measured the actual bottom bracket height of the hail and it's a rather lofty 352 millimetres. Lower bottom brackets are preferred for bikes um, that are used for downhill and enduro riding such as the hail as they lower the centre of gravity of the bike, making it more settled and stable in flat corners and better for off-camber grip too. Liv told me they chose to keep the high bottom bracket to prevent pedal strikes. They also say that the centre of gravity was kept low by the use of that trinion shock mount. Other bikes though benefit from the Trinian mount and also a low BB, lowering the centre of gravity even further. Liv quote research saying that women have shorter torsos and longer legs than men and that a large amount of women's strength come from their legs affecting their weight distribution. 
The brand says that if you put a woman on the correct size men's frame, she will likely be bent too far over the bike, resulting in an extreme back, back angle and be too stretched out, which also results in an extreme armpit angle. So here's where I think they've missed a trick. Instead of keeping a short reach, as they've done with the hail, they could have lengthened the reach to match the rain, and while steepening the effective seat angle, and therefore shortening the effective top tube, it would have given the female riders all the benefits of a more stable and confidence-giving ride when descending from that lengthened reach and the lengthened wheelbase, but whilst steepening that effective seat angle would also bring the rider closer to the bars for climbing, um, and so that top tube shorter. It makes climbing much more comfortable and the rider would be much more efficient. The rider would also be able to centre herself on the bike easily and she'd have a better time all around. As it stands, it's difficult to find the centre of the hail and stay there, planted, secure, and able to weight both the front and back wheel effectively. Despite what you think I'm about to say, given the above critique, the ride of the hail is not an altogether bad affair. Climbing aboard the hail is average at best. There are better climbing bikes out there at the moment, but the hail does okay. If it's a slow grind to the top you're after, it only weighs just over 31 pounds, so it's pretty light. Whilst the seated position of the bike felt roomy enough, owing to that slack seat angle. Whilst descending, it felt cramped, and my normal 760mm wide bars felt too narrow. Widening the bars to 780mm made for a roomier, more comfortable descending position, and it was more confidence giving, but this is just a cover up for the short reach. At five foot four, 780mm wide bars are too wide for me, and I struggle to weight the front wheel effectively. When descending, the Maestro dual privet is pretty effective at soaking up those bumps, big and small. It provides plenty of traction and a touch of pop when you want it too. The trinium mount is sensitive and supple in the beginning of its travel and it provides plenty of support throughout the stroke. The light tune on the deluxe shock proved a little too light for me. I ran the shock without any rebound damping applied, something that's becoming a rather regular occurrence for me on new metric shocks, especially ones with lighter or digressive rebound tunes. The Yari Fort spec give traditional Yari-like performance, sensitive in the early stroke but lacking at mid-stroke ramp up, leaving me running them with more air than I'd really like to give me that support. I found it difficult to centre my weight on this bike. The short reach makes it feel as if you're on top of the bike rather than in it, and find, finding that centre point of a longer bike allows you to weight the front and the back wheels more effectively without feeling that as soon as you move backwards the front wheel is unweighted and therefore without grip. The hail gives a feeling that's on overall more twitchy and one with less confident drive forwards. The short dropper post, so it's un only 100mm on this bike, also makes no sense here. The seat post and the saddle was in the way on all the descents and I could easily have fitted a 125mm post, maybe even a 150 dropper. Liv says this will be updated for future bikes and so we're looking for longer dropper posts there, which would be good. The high bottom bracket height also adds to the feeling of being on top of the bike. It certainly adds to a feeling of instability, noticed most predominantly when the going gets fast and rough. With a wheelbase creeping upwards though, at 11.88mm, it's not the shortest enduro bike that I've ridden, and if you don't want to experiment with longer bikes or tackle the change in riding style that will inevitably be needed as the reach and wheelbase gets longer, the suspension characteristics of the hail make this not a bad choice for a neat and nimble bike. Liv say they have created geometry ready for women riders using body measurement data to dictate the bike design and build. If the hail is a product of what women need, then I can't say I'm entirely on board with the movement. I understand that women might have different physical dimensions to men and that, as an average, we might need the bars closer to us for descending and climbing, for example. But I think that, if Liv, that Liv could have taken a different route in the design of this bike and it would have produced a more confident, inspiring and more efficient bike. For a full review in writing, head over to Offroad CC now and remember to check out our other reviews on YouTube as well. Thanks for watching.